I feel like I feel like we already got the Q and A out of the picture. Like I was talking so much about with Woody about like so much of this. How do you trade in halts? How to deal with them? I do not really trade halted stocks, Lloyd. I really don't, man. Again, just line a line, you know, just because they halt, it's just going to make it more of a headache. I don't really try to tackle the stocks that are halting all day, especially the ones that are halting every 10 seconds. Those are the most annoying ones possible. I'm not a fan of majorly halted stocks, man. I'm not. And I still just wait for my desire. <laughs> you asked a palm reader. I'm still just waiting for my desired entries. Like if some, like, like this, man, this was a stock that halted. Again, that was the line I would have scaled if this was a little bit different of a scenario and say that that was, you know, five to three drop, not, you know, 48 to, but the, but the price action still, aligns the lines are still um pertinent if that makes sense you know it's still line to line price action like there's a reason why i said it would bounce up to there and then it did like you know what i mean so things like that but i trade them more cautiously of course maybe i'll size down but i'm still just waiting for my confirms i like death candles i like major drops and then the bounce to an outer line Try to get a hold of Chicago Trader, but he's still climbing the wall. <laughs> yeah, man, he's definitely doing his own thing. He's like in the game right now, right now. I don't want to, I don't want to mess up his trading, man. I might mess it up. Let's see what's Nettie doing. Sun W. Oh my God, everything. Look at this, man. He cut off the head of the snake, bro. This is what happened. So guys, we'll talk about this for a second. So like if SPI is the king cobra, right? The king cobra, man. What do you think Sun W is? It's a sympathy play, man. This is not going to be up. What has this been doing? Let's take a look. What has this been doing for the last like week? Just fucking basing, dude. Did nothing. But of course it runs today because it's the same sector. It's the same niche. It's things like that. So this is going to get some traction. But when, and I'll just put them freaking side by side, when SPI gets the head of the snake cut off, man, you got to watch the sympathies. And you got to hit the sympathies. I've never hit the main one, man. It's the sympathies you want to hit because these are, they never run as far as the main and they're always much weaker. Um, how did you find out that spy will be exactly 45? <laughs> oh my God, it did, huh? I mean, dude, I had no idea, bro. Literally, like that was a shot in the goddamn dark, dude. I had no idea. I just, here's the funny thing. I, you know, when you've been doing this for so long, you just, you just anticipate more. So I called 45 when it was trading at 30. I called 45 when it was doing this, right? Um, I just saw the pull, man. Where was it? I just saw the pull. Here's the thing, man. You just can't underestimate stocks like this. And the one suggestion I will give you on something like this, I'll give you one suggestion. Here's the reason why I said 45. 45 was around the area of a whole and half dollar number 50, correct? That's huge psychological price level. Sometimes they don't make it. The reason why I said 45 or that, that range, like that kind of typical point, is because a stock needs a blow off move. So let's take a look at this, right? Like who's got, you know, so hopefully you go, oh, hey, see you, Lloyd. Thanks, bud. So <laughs> insider trading. If you guys need, yeah, look at my account, Tay. I didn't make a single dollar on Spy today. <laughs> Definitely not. Guys, you need, this is a grind. This is a up, 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 up. There's no blow off top yet. So the reason why I said 45 when it was trading at 30 is now you have like the really big candles. So just look at these, the difference, guys. These are the blow off candles, man. That's why. So again, you know, 45 was just a shot in the dark for real. But, um, you know, these are just, if all the candles are just maybe a little bit progressively bigger or even the same size or even smaller, you haven't had that blow off top yet. This is double to triple the size of these big ones. See that? Yeah, yeah, Steven gets it. Exhaustion candle. So when I was seeing it trade at 30, I was like, dude, this will probably go to 45 because we need, we need that blow off, dude. This is a huge move. This is a runner. You, it's like a jogger who's jogging across the football field. I mean, look at this, dude. That was the short, man. Damn. Now I'm getting serious FOMO, but um, I hate when you call something exactly and you didn't catch it. That's like my biggest pet peeve in trading, dude. I was like, hindsight huru, just fucking call that shit exactly. And then I don't get it. Maybe one of you degenerates got it. But the whole point is we have a jogger who's just got on the Olympic 
you know, athlete team, whatever he's, he's, he's practicing for the gold medal. He's practicing for it. You know, the Olympics are coming up. He's doing his jogs in his little neighborhood, maybe new construction, gated community, maybe in Texas, 300 grand. And then boom, dude, he puts on his shoes. He's going, he's going a slight jog, dude. He's not even huffing and puffing. He starts catching some speed. He starts sprinting, dude. He starts running. He starts really running. Oh shit, dude. He just ran his last. Now he faints. It's, it's inertia, dude. It's momentum and inertia. Throw a ball up in an air and it peaks out at a certain point, right? And then, you know, gravity takes hold, man. That's exactly what this is. This is the sprinter that went from walking to jogging to running to fucking sprinting, dude. And the blow off candles are the sprint. That's the, that's the dude, he doesn't have, that's like, okay, that's like if you're, um, I used to lift weights really heavily back in college, man. I used to actually be um, a lot bigger than I was now, but I used to hit the gym pretty hard and I would do like a certain amount of reps, right? So like, if this is like, okay, dude, I can do 20 reps. This is like that last five before your arms give out, man. And then it just, you just, then you just fall to the floor, man. Your arms and muscles are tired. Stocks are the same way. Wait for the blow off. Wait for that last rep to where you just, your chest can't take it anymore. Dude, your, your, your quads, your arms, your laterals, quad laterals, all that bullshit just can't take it anymore. And this is what happens. But then, then the reason why I drew these lines and I want you to follow me here Again, I say this every single webinar, and I can't stress this enough. I've never even heard a trader say this outside of me. When you have a stock that shows a potential amount of range, this is an extraordinary amount of range. I drew a very outer line scale zone because when a stock has this amount of range, even when it's dead on pops, it will use that range. Do you understand that? If this didn't have range, it wouldn't pop for shit. When a stock has extraordinary range, even on bounces, when you think it's done, it will use that range. That's why I drew those lines. Now, if we're talking about a low-hanging fruit tomorrow on something like SPI, dude, this could run $20 before coming back down. This is why I use outer lines on um, low-hanging fruit every single, every single day, and I miss a lot of them because I'm not willing to have a bad entry. I'm willing to have the perfect entry or I pass on the trade. See what I'm saying? Oh, shit. Here he is. <laughs> he was probably like, Tosh usually finishes at noon. I'm going to come at noon. Joe, you coming on? Don't make me drag you in this webinar, bro. <laughs> I will pull you in. <laughs> Joe, where are you at, son? Let me allow him to talk. Let's see if he's in here. All right, one sec, guys. Dude, I knew you were waiting for noon. You know that's when I usually stop. What's up, man? Bro, I knew you were waiting for that noon tick. Top tick Dude, noon. I had, I had another appointment. and uh, With the toilet? That I had to – yeah, right. Fucking – that's what it feels like today, looking at the spy. Um, but, no, it was uh, – um, I'm trying to basically convince this dude to sell his motel. Um, and uh, so I had to go to that. And I was like, all right, Tosh is usually done with, <laughs> with the new member side at about 1.30, 1.45. So I, I knew it. I knew it, dude. I can, I'm predicting the future left and right today, bro. I picked the perfect lines on this. I'm telling you, man. Oh, shit. Dude. Oh, How you doing, buddy? Funny. Man, I didn't even I didn't even check on SPI. I didn't Yo. even check that it was going straight parabolic. Like I didn't even know. Last time I looked at SPI, 100% hand on a stack of Bibles. Honestly, last time I looked, it was at 490. Get out of here. That's the last time I looked. I left the computer. Joe, you like, want to hear the funny part today, dude? Here's the I funny didn't part. trade today either. Uh, dude, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't either. I literally have like a little bit of, um, of, of big caps on the long side, but dude, outside of that, I'm just building positions slowly for long-term swings. I got like nothing today, dude. Not one small cap. Yeah. It's, it's funny, man. This is when you know you've been trading too long. Bro, during this webinar, when, when uh, Spy was at 30, I literally called. I said, I think this is probably go to like 45. It's 47 wow. tanks. And then I drew these, dude, when this was tanking like this, I was like, bro, these are the lines you want to scale. <laughs> For the short, wow. I was like, dude, I've been doing this too long, man. Wow, bro. That's it's 
what a freaking amazing chart. That's all I can say. Isn't it beautiful? It's just like the opportunity is huge, but again, it's so scary, man. It's so scary to the point where you got to, it, to me, man, it's never worth it to go after these. It's unless you go for the simps, you can size the simps, dude. Look at Sun W, look at Pola, bro. These are the stocks that make you money. Yep. Look at these death candles, yeah, man. The, the Following the leader. Follow the leader. Manageable. Yeah, you can manage the range easier. In Crazy, those. right? Yeah, POLA, it goes from 230 to 330. Okay, that's manageable. That's a dollar. That's not that bad. SPI goes from 4 to 46. That's ah, a little bit. <laughs> for real. Ah. Joe, I wanted to just give a second today for you to kind of explain um, a little bit of the um, accelerator course because I've gotten a lot of questions on it sure. recently. Um, because you're the creator, I just wanted to see if maybe you could just weigh on really quick while I uh, probably scoop up a little course there right now. <laughs> so take her away, bro. <laughs> anytime now. I can handle that. Yeah, anytime now. All right, so the accelerator, the purpose of it was, you know, we had 800 videos in library at the time. Me and Alex got together and I told Alex, I said, look, dude, I think it's time to create an actual like timeline and a course for everyone to follow along to make sure that, you know, we cut down this 800, 800 videos down into condense it into, let's say uh, the target was always, you know, one work day, one eight hour work day, condense everything down into one eight hour work day it's a jump start it cuts everything down into what's necessary um, builds the right habits from the beginning helps manage what you need to pay attention to what you don't need to pay attention to because you know between me and Alex you know we've we've witnessed probably every single person's teachings out there right that between every other service between every other thing out there it we've witnessed it all all the unnecessary things that get said because they sound cool no there's no unnecessary teachings in this course it's simply just the rudimentary foundation in order to be able to successfully become a day trader for yourself in probably i would tell you 30 to 60 days maximum just following everything that's taught in that course. I like, you know, everybody talks about Faye. Faye is known for like the success story of MIC's teachings. All Faye does is follow the MIC process every single day. That process is taught in the accelerator. Dude, that I love that. So process is taught through that entire thing. Dude, so if you guys need any freaking help with anything as it pertains to um, just anything, man, like when it comes to MIC, these are all of our strategies, man. These are all of our teachings, guys. This is literally like everything in a nutshell. I mean, Joe, like even we include like psychology in this, right? That's why I was saying like the thing about the teachings at MIC is it's applicable to every single market, right? Like it's like big yes. caps, small caps. Dude, even people have literally messaged us and say it actually works in Forex for God's sakes, as funny as that sounds. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, of course it does, man, because line to line works, right? So I just want yep. you guys to know that we're just not, we're not just like a small, um, you know, a small cap bias room. We're not just, you know, we, dude, this applies. And to we're not short biased either. We're not sure by us either. At at ten oh eight this morning, we were telling every single short seller to stop shorting SPI. All of the red flags were there, and we shared them in the chat room. I don't know if you've discussed them. Uh, if you did, you just gave a lot of free knowledge away. Uh <laughs> I definitely, I definitely kind of did, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, uh, yeah, I missed that part. Um, Look at this. But, oh, God, have mercy. Bro, Spy's puking today. Spy's puking. Oh, that is nasty, man. Spy wow, is that's puking. Woo. Thank um, God I only have call options and I'm not, like, fully exposed here. Yikes. <laughs> I know I'm long man. some things. I'm like, man, this is looking a little shaky in big cap land. Yeah, that's looking rough. That's looking rough. You know, and I may be, you know, late to join the bear parade, you know, but I'm just like, 
I don't want to miss a good opportunity to buy, you know, by getting overly aggressive on the short side too soon. But I think it's too uh, soon to get overly aggressive. No, I, I, remember what I, we've been saying know. for weeks, man. I think November is when we're going to start really seeing some sell off. But, dude, this is actually starting to show a little bit of weakness that I like. I'm stoked. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's got. I mean, if we lose 320. 320 is big, dude. 320 I mean, that's big. got. That's got 300 written all over it. I Bro, mean, I was it, just going to say, like, dude, I was literally just going to say, I was going to say 320 and then 300 right. I mean, guys, like we're not even talking about the numbers. You know, these are psychological price levels, but look at the lines, man. Like, ooh. Yep. Dude. Yeah, if we lose if we lose 320, I'm stomping out of my long and, you know, I might I might join the short, but I don't really want to do it today. Like I'd rather not have that trade today well it feels like it feels like today would honestly be like a day of anticipation like wait for the you know wait for the 320 break here's here's what i like about down here like honestly i like it for a bounce down here because it's too far away from vwap we need to come back to vwap we need to come back um so i you know there needs to be a little bit of a i don't see any catalysts either to anything so, you know, it could just be money moving out of the market from the long side to the short side or just protecting themselves. I think, you know, I just think that there's a lot of uncertainty with the election. And, you know, we I may agree. be seeing that right now. We, we might be seeing that right now. I, and, I, and, you know, under 320, though, I don't like it for the long. Crazy, right? Yeah. I'm yuck. On the <laughs> yuck. Long. This has yeah. John White written all over it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I mean, just look how extended it is away from PWAP here. What are we at? 322? That's great. 322.95, yeah, bro. 322.95. The lows on on Monday were what? Like 321? Something like that? Something right? like that, I think. Yeah, yeah, look at that. 321.73. Yeah. 321. Yeah, bro, so I'm, uh, whenever I pay attention to SPY, I also pay attention to the VU because this is an ETF that mirrors the SPY, the Vanguard. And then I oh, also yeah. pay attention to QQQ, man. These are the three, man. Yep. These are the three. Yeah. In fact, these are the three, honestly, that if you're a long-term investor, this is like the shit that you just load up and hold for 20 years, man. Try to get a seven to 10% annual return. But outside yeah, of that- I blame, uh, I blame Tesla. <laughs> for real, dude, for real. <laughs> like, <laughs> I blame Tesla. Oh, this is yeah, sick. So- this, is, this is nice sell-off actually. How long the sell-off lasts, I don't know. Knows, I have no dude. idea. I I really don't think we're going to go, like, much lower right now. I don't think so, yet. I think the closer I, we are to election time, that's when we're going to get some real volatility. Right now, I think it's probably just going to bounce back and down and bounce back and down. And It's going to play ping pong a little bit. But, dude, come yeah. election time, we could see this for the course of weeks, shit like this. Like yep. maybe even months, dude. Like it's hard to say, man. It's hard to say how long like did everything. the pandemic last? Honestly, let's go back to like yeah, the it, pandemic. Seriously, if we everything look, everything's so far away from the from VWAP right now, like it's it's got to bounce. And if it doesn't bounce, I mean things are shifting. So, Joe, shifting. I'm looking at this. We had a solid month of down during the pandemic, literally, and it almost exactly a month, right? Twenty one to what twenty? Yeah, we had a month. We had a, we had exactly a month. Yeah. Yep. If we, I assume that depending on the, you know, the, I know we talk about this a lot, but depending on the result of the election, uh, this is, this is not impossible again, something that just, it, and not necessarily as volatile or as drastic, but we could just have serious downside and that be the bear market for a, a good long while. It's, it's hard to say, man, it's very hard to say, but you know, we can speculate as best we can, at least just be prepared for it. Again, it's like, don't anticipate, but be prepared and, you know, establish a plan in your head, at least. Yeah. I don't see like much, like, I don't really see a big technical confirmation to get short. Like for down sure. here. I don't either. Like uh, if I were a short seller down here, you know, and I had a position, I wouldn't really be thinking like add, I'd be thinking take, 
profits. Bro, I've embarrassed um, Disney for like months. Look at this sell off, man. We had a six sell off. No, man, this bad no. boy from like, I, 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 of course, I piked it. I didn't expect this kind of sell off so quickly. But man, I was taking shorts like the 135. And man, I wish I would have held. But dude, Disney, it's like, where is the fix? Figure out how this company during a pandemic that makes a, they make seven to eight million dollars a day in net revenue for, at the wow. theme park bro in in california how the wow. hell are they up in and losing that money every single because mulan because they're streaming service are you out of your mind i am they so blamed mulan I stand it dude oh they blamed because mulan couldn't go to theater and it went to streaming instead and it went to that premiere stream so if you pay attention when yeah. disney plus first came out it was 7.99 but now for like twenty nine ninety nine a month or something, you get access to what would be quote unquote a theater release. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, dude, are they banking all their eggs on literally a streaming service? Because how the hell could Disney do good right now? I'm so embarrassed, Disney. It's crazy. Dude, I like I. I wouldn't pay twenty nine ninety nine to have it streamed in my home. You go to the theater for the experience. Like yeah, you go there like, for the experience of the big screen, the big although, sound. Although I will say, you know? I, I, I will pay twenty nine ninety nine for the Mandalorian. <laughs> 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 Season two, baby. Oh boy. But not Mulan. <laughs> yeah. No, I no, I saw Mulan, but it was by other means. Other because because your your daughter wanted to see it. <laughs> no. Oh. Because I wanted to just see it. Oh, there you I go. I didn't pay for it. I didn't pay twenty nine ninety nine. I think I, I think I think shit. I saw it on X Vids the other night. <laughs> <laughs> Under Disney oh, Premier Access category. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, man, that's too funny. Bro, what's um what's SBI doing? Is it like let's, let's take a look. It's it, I think it's fading off. Let's see. Yikes, look at this, guys. This is, so this is the daily chart. <laughs> you know what this wick is? How long is it halted? Bro, this wick is people underwater. You understand what that means? These are long screaming. Not laughing at long, oh, it's just telling you what's happening. Man. Yep, that was the sell-off. Dude, that was the push right there. This is now just nasty. I'm thinking, Joe, wow. I'm thinking if we close anywhere near VWAP or above, like right here to VWAP, bro, we could literally get a push back up to like 27 tomorrow. This is why I do outer lines, man. When this has that range, bro, it's going to use it. This could just Dude, this dead cat bounce. Monstrous. The borrows tomorrow are going to be stupid expensive. Stupid expensive because literally if you were to size accordingly to range and like kind of really learn how to scale in correctly as per range in your account size, it's almost like a guaranteed short, man. Yeah, <laughs> Nothing yeah. is guaranteed, but you know what I mean. Like it's the concept yep. of when you have people down from 47 to 18, Guys, that's just too much overhead. It's too much. There's too much underwater to really save this. But anything can happen. And again, this is the market. There's no guarantees, bro. And it also depends on how it closes. These are the days, Joe, where I'm like, yeah, dude, it's, I swear uh, to God, bro, these are the days like where tomorrow I'm like, all right, fuck it, dude. If it opens at, at 15, I'll just scale 150 shares per $2 and just play fun money, hold it for a week. I'm like, let's just go 150, 150, 150, 150, 150. And then dude, by the end of the week, you're up like 10 G. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I'm going to just scale in one share at a time. One share at a time. I'll get there. Sometimes, sometimes giving yourself a water range and small size is like, the bread and butter that you needed sometimes it really is man something like this tomorrow yeah it's... but again the borrow is going to be like uh we request an arm or leg and a social security number for 10 shares please yeah and you're like where do yeah, i sign please fill out this credit application <laughs> no i'm kidding man again and guys if the borrow is too expensive for, uh, yeah there's gonna be all kinds of do you have a <laughs> yeah for real yeah yeah, the poll for the locates. Yeah, there you go. The poll for yeah, the locates it, I, is a right testicle. It yes, exactly. It's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be over a dollar. It's gonna be for share. sure. Guaranteed. Yeah, I mean, dude, I think it I was think... just what they did today was so suspect. Like what the brokers did today was so suspect. It was so 
it, it was kind of like, dude, it was like a red flashing light in your face, man. Yeah. It's almost like, it, you almost feel like the broker, like these, like, not Cobra, of course, because, man, I know Chad, and they're as legit as it gets, dude, but I'm talking about, like, the other guys, dude, and I could yep. name names, but I'm not going to. I feel like these guys literally get on the phone with the CEOs of these companies, man, and they're like, all right, when do you want us to cut, a, cut the locate sort? Like, dude, it, it's, oh, man, some of these guys, man, the rules they play. But it's, I mean, I mean, what have we talked about so far? We talk, Did we talk about the locate situation? We did. We, I, I mentioned it a little okay. bit. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So the, the, uh, the fact that at the more, think about it in terms of like, like just, just normal, like if you were going to go buy a t-shirt, right? Think yep. about it like you're going to go buy a t-shirt. Let's say you're like, like you're not bow and you don't go buy the ed hardy black t-shirts in bulk from tj maxx ed hardy. let's say let's say hey that you go to like you know um versace and you buy a 120 dollars piece of white t-shirt that like there's nothing special about it right nothing that was locates this morning for spi there was yeah it was a versace t-shirt SPI. yeah yeah, there was nothing special about SPI this morning. Zero. There was, in terms of why you would pay, like from some of the sources, it was upwards of 50 cents a share. So let's think about this. If all of a sudden, middle of the day, longs have controlled it the entire day versus VWAP, right? I mean, we showed, we shared that chart. We showed that, you know, how they were controlling it around VWAP all day long. All, well, I'm not saying all day, but all morning, all morning up until, you know, about 10, 10 05, it started looking like, whoa, what's happening here? For sure. Um, but there was a red flags because, you know, you can't squeeze it if there's not stubborn shorts. And Cobra wasn't loaning out any more shares. They were gone, right? You couldn't get any more. Yeah. At one point, you, you literally them, couldn't get the bar and I didn't get any. I was like, dude, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they're out there now with Cobra or anybody else, but um, at the time it was like more than 50 cents a share to locate it. And, and then all of a sudden, okay, let's think about the Versace t-shirt. All of a sudden you walk into the Versace store and 50% off a Versace t-shirt. All of a sudden $120 shirt is $60. Like mothballs had just gotten into it. Dude, for real, like what's, what is your mentality as a, like, if you're somebody that doesn't really, you know, like you focus on the sale, you don't focus on the price, you focus on the sale, right? The discount. Well, everybody knows oh, that's the a price 50, of something. Oh, that's a 55% discount. Dude, 100%. Everybody knows the price of something. Very few people know the value. Yeah. And all of a sudden this morning, all of a sudden locates went from like 50 cents a share to 20. Yeah, it's 19, that I think it was. A, yeah, yeah. That is a 60% discount all so, of the sudden. So you Why guys had all of the sudden are we able to sell shares to people for 60% well, less? Well, Joe, and here's, and here's the thing that gets people, dude. So think about it like, like this. Like, what the fuck? Well, dude, and think I'm about it like I'm just going to say that. Like, are you serious? The reason? Just a midday, midday discount. Oh, flash sale, locates for SPI. Bro, and you Fuck know what the funny me. thing is? Joe, you know what the funny Fraud, thing is? The reason bro. why this squeezed the way it did, dude, is here's the psychology behind it. If you started the day and it was 19 cents a share, which is what technically the bottom cheap price was today, bro, that's astronomical. I don't pay for anything yeah. usually above six. So what happens do you think when, you, <laughs> when Joey's voice goes, what do you think happens when it goes from 60 or something like that to 20 cents? You're gonna go, oh, dude! Now it's cheap. That is psychology. Right. That's when. That's when Versace goes. Let's get these. It's dumb the Versace T-shirt. Yep, let's get it's these dumb fucks to buy Versace a thousand dollars shirt at four hundred and make them feel they got a deal. Yep. So when it's you a get stupid average, fucking located. dude, when you get an average new trader, he goes, dude, sixty to nineteen. I'm getting a steal. No, dude, I'm you're in. still getting raped. I can afford that. That's and that's then correct. That is the suckers that the fucking brokers that do that jacked up shit. This is why you get this. In. This is why that's you get this. That's what happens. 
You fucking destroy people and you suck it in as a broker yep. and a clearing firm. Fucking Wall Street assholes. And man. here's the best part. Here's the best part. If if it started at 19 and went to six, it would be the same thing. It's a psychology yeah. thing. It's like you guys saw the, yeah. the social dilemma. Whoever hasn't seen that, go see that. The way of manipulation into your mind of how you're going to participate. This is how they do it in locate sources. This is, dude, 19 cents a share is like, yeah. go fuck yourself. When you see it down from 60, though, you go, ooh, opportunity. And then all these amateur guys get in yeah. and done. Yep. It's done. You see that? Yep. That's the point. That's the, this is why the squeeze days, because everybody thought they were getting a discount on the locate who's a short seller and all the pros on Twitter, all these gurus who know every fucking thing. When they make a hundred grand a day, they make a hundred grand a day, 50 grand, 70 grand. Boom. Today they lose their entire million dollar account. Yeah. They get smoked. But the problem that the problem that I have is like, some are GSE. Some it's, are. Dude. It's like, you can you can go gamble. I mean, Bow has talked about this. You can go and gamble your entire net worth away, but you can't trade outside PDT, right? Dude. Like you can go into a I can go into a casino and gamble my entire life away in you, a matter of hours. Here's the, I can here's bet the, my entire life and lose it, but I can't trade outside PDT. But a broker can discount shares to short middle of the fucking day by 60% all of a sudden to suck in people, to create more volume, to create more order flow, to create more income from themselves and fuck retail. But I can't trade outside PDT as a little guy. Like speaking for the little guy, I, you can't trade outside PDT if you're not over 25 grand. That's just as fucked up, bro. It's Dude, fucked and, up. And, and imagine like, imagine the guys today, Joe, that yeah. had like maybe a $15,000 TD Ameritrade account, right? Say they had $15,000 and say they longed, you know, 500 shares at 44. Yeah. Bro. The, and they're it, like, no, they're, PDT's they're, for the, for their protection. Full PDT's shit. for Fuck their you. protection. That's what Fuck I'm saying. You. So yeah, now, no, they're gonna, now they're going to owe TD Ameritrade a shit ton of money by the time they sell tomorrow at four exactly. or two days from now, but they can't trade unlimited under 25. So what? Right. The? Yeah. But they can short something like this. Or they can long God, it. Or they like, can long it at 44 yeah. on margin. Yeah. I, it, it's like, okay, sure. Be your, do your own damage. Do your own. Here's the keys to fucking. Here's the keys to the car that drives a thousand miles an hour. Go do that in traffic. Like, just like, <laughs> yeah, it, all of a sudden, all of a sudden it's the keys to just fucking wreck yourself, but you can't trade outside PDT. Why can I not trade outside PDT? Well, it's protection for the broker. It's not protection for retail traders. It is not protection for retail traders. It is traders. not protection for retail traders. But the fucked up shit is that all of a sudden we can discount shares middle of the day. So, did all of a sudden some big institution just like dump at 390 and just like, <laughs> oh, all of a sudden, yeah, you can share, you can short our shares that we own already. We'll allow it. We'll, we'll lend our shares out. Crazy, horse right? Shit. Horse shit, man. I'm calling horse shit. <laughs> like SPI is, you know, it's great to look at, right? It's fun to look at. It's like, okay, this is going to light up the small cap market again, but everybody that, buys the $60 Versace t-shirt on sale like they're not around tomorrow they're done by this, the way this is as close done. this is as close to table we'll ever get to cursing <laughs> in chat it's the closest in, she will have to get to cursing in chat in you, chat in meet chat. her in person meet, meet her, her in person, in person. And then, yeah yeah there is no filter what there a role no model filter there <laughs> but you know, and, and here's the thing, she's guys. A class she, act. She's a class act. Here's the she's thing, professional. Man. And then you meet her in person, you're like, "Whoa, she's a firecracker, dude! Firecracker, <laughs> man! Like one of the funnest people ever." So here's the other thing, man. I gave you guys the lines, damn, dude. I missed a hell of a trade. So here's the thing, guys. Again, I can't stress this enough. One of the major things that we teach at MIC, if not the thing we teach, is confirmation. Is confirmation. Yep. So I'm always saying one thing. Why short a front side move until the death candle comes? Don't short it until the death candle comes. Now, this was a death candle into a halt to the down, limit down. This is what's called a limit down. And then it was so limited down 
you can basically categorize this as a death candle just all encompassing from here to here because it's still people underwater. It's just still the same concept. Because the candle doesn't connect and there's another candle, it doesn't matter. This is yep. the death candle range. So dude, if you did short this day, if you paid the locates and you did get raped by your broker, that's one thing. That's a different topic of conversation. Two, if you traded this today on the short side without you fell confirmation- fell for it. Somebody fell for it. Yeah, 100%. And here's the thing. Why? They fell for it for after this. we warned against it. Dude, we warned you, against it. Bro, before it ever wait. happened. Just wait for this, bro. Yeah. Just wait. Just, just the opportunity comes when you have range. Range is a beautiful thing because even, look, range, you can quote me on this. Range is a beautiful thing because even if you're late, there's still a move. Yep. That's range, man. You don't yep. have to capture tops and bottoms, man. Look what I showed you. This is the lines. I still think I, I just don't these days, man. I just, I almost trade retired that I don't have the stomach to trade this stuff anymore. I did it in my prime, but nowadays, man, I take the base hits and stuff. I didn't really want to touch this today, but I'm telling you that was still the lines. If you are a little bit riskier or ballsier, you could have done it, but wait for the confirm, wait for this massive weakness. And if you did have shares, that's what you wait for to scale. Yep. That's what you wait for, man. So again, you know, I don't want new traders trading something like this. I really don't. But if you did, that's what I would wait for. Just give me yeah. There's probably, opportunity, yeah. but it's the it's like it's the broker that dangled that donut in front of the fat kid trying to lose weight, and they're like, just lick it, just taste it, <laughs> just smell it. Like you don't need to do anything else. Just, just. Chew it and then spit it out. You don't have to swallow it. Just chew it up. Chew it up and put then spit it in the trash can. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. You're not gonna get fat yep. from that. Dude. And and then you get hooked. It's it, it 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 and then it's all of a sudden the new trader that they're like, I got the shares now. Now I and then they justify a reason to get in. Like, I got shares now. Let me short some. And then bloop, oh fuck. Well, I got some more shares. Let me just add. And well, then, it's like, and it's also <laughs> like, dude, it's also like if you are, um, um, if you're on a diet, right? And you're like, ah, fuck it, dude. I'm at a party. It's New Year's. Been on a diet for three months, man. I'm on no sugar, gluten, dairy, all that stuff. You're like, all right, what's one bite of cake? It's New Year's. And then you're like, well, fuck it. I just yeah. broke my diet. Let's just have the whole cake. Oh, and order yeah. pizza too. It's one bite of cake. Fuck it. It's the whole cake. Fuck it. We're going out for dinner tomorrow. Like, it's, it's. Where does that's, it stop? Yeah, it's a great that's, analogy. I agree. That's exactly right, man. You're just like, because you got the locates. You're like, well, I have the locates now. Oh, shit, I'm revenge trading. But I got the locates. Nobody has the locates. I have the opportunity. I can nah, trade my way out. Yeah. Nah, you're broker, dude. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, but I'm like, so the broker always argues that the broker's there to protect you. Oh, we're here to protect you. We're here to make sure that you don't do things that can, like, hurt yourself. But it's just like, yeah, it's just, it's bullshit, bro. It's just it's fucking bullshit. bullshit. It's bullshit. Yep. And that's why, dude, that's why I like Cobra so much. That's why I love they, Cobra, man. They truly are there to protect you. And I've talked to Chad about this personally before. And he goes, dude, I hate seeing people blow up. He's like, I don't give a shit about order flow. I don't give a shit about that. He says, I care about the people that are at the broker that stay there to trade, to continue to trade, because as long as they continue to trade, then we continue to make money. But well, it's a win-win. The trader is still alive, alive and they get like to they make, money. To make money. Dude, it's yeah. a win-win. If, if Cobra don't make exactly. money, they're not around anymore. Like, you That's see what I'm saying? They don't market it's a business. Locates either. If they were in the business of marking up locates and buying and selling locates, then they wouldn't have that attitude right? They wouldn't have that attitude. They'd be out just capturing that stuff. And so that's I mean, exactly it's just, right. Dude, it's, it's jacked up. It's jacked up that brokers are allowed to like dangle that carrot. They're allowed to do such a thing middle of the day when there's no manipulation yet, right? Like it's no, it's just so suspect. Okay. All of a sudden, all of a sudden this locate source is, is 60% discount. And then all of a sudden they rip it higher. Okay, red flag. Like, I'm not dumb. Like, it, it's like, 
you got to be shitting me. You got to be shitting me. Joe, look at this. It, look at this. Oh. California Governor Newsom um, down here in Cali on Wednesday signed an executive order to ban gas-powered cars and trucks in California by 2035. A movie should have would cut greenhouse gas emissions by more than a third. Plus, Newsom has uh, he is directing the the California Air Resources Board to establish regulations that require all new. Hey, fuck it, dude! I'm getting a Tesla S model. <laughs> right. Well, you know that introduces a new issue. So, public transport that can't afford to buy uh, those vehicles, can they drive them or can they just not purchase them? Well, considering we have until 2035, I think we got enough time to figure that out. <laughs> Where's Elon when you also, need him? Yeah, I know, right? Also, that's 15 years to get Governor Newsom out of office. So. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> For the love of God. <laughs> Governor Gruesome. Yes. Hey, you know what? I'm Governor actually down. I'm gruesome. actually down with this move, man. Hey, I'm I'm an environmentalist. I'm down with that. But dude, all the other shit he does makes me want to kill him, dude. He's just an idiot. Yeah. I'm down on the environmental side, but if you think about all these businesses that won't be able to afford, think about maybe the snowball effect here. Like that they can't afford to go out and buy new electric vehicles. So they have to continue to fix these old internal combustion engines. And the only way to fix them is to keep just plugging holes. And so it just continues to leak out more smog, more smog, and then they get flagged for smog. And so then there's a lot of people that don't uh, do inspections, that <laughs> drive it officially... illegally. And then it's just like, what the fuck? Bro, I'm officially going balls deep in solo, man. These are only yeah, $15,000, bro. Now's your time, solo. Cheaper now's than a Honda Accord now. <laughs> You can go 80 miles per hour and 100 miles on a day. I'm going hard in a solo, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's great news for, you know, somebody like Tesla. That's great news. That is solid for, news for Tesla. Oh, my God. For the companies that can't do that, what's that? You know, they're just going to shut their doors because of transport, because, because transport fails. And so if transport fails uh, and they can't afford it, you know, where are these people we're going to go get jobs. You know, we're all about, yeah, let's go for the environment. Let's do it. Woo. But then what are those people going to do if there's no resolution there? The only resolution that gruesome has is outlaw electric vehicles. Okay. Good fucking idea. Dumbass. Dude. Like good, good idea. Where's the alternative for the people that can't afford it? Well, it's just like, like the rest dude, of the, like the rest of the homeless what's... in your fucking state. Bro, News yeah, Newsom got a seven million dollar house, bro. He don't give a fuck about the poor class, middle class. Dude. No, no, he doesn't. He does everything for somebody that's worth seven figures or more. Hundred thousand percent. So, if, you know, my favorite thing recently, bro. My favorite thing is um, Grant Cardone. You know, one of those guys are <laughs> yes, yep. Tay, yes, 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 and yes again. You know, I think it was Grant Cardone or one of those one of those you know real estate tycoons. They were saying recently, they were like. You know, of course, all the major um, businessmen, all the richest men in the world, like Jeff Bezos or, you know, the Warren Buffetts or Charlie Mungers, you know, these type of guys, Elon Musk, all these guys are like, or whoever said it, they're all like, you know, let's raise taxes, man. We need to, dude, of course you want to raise taxes, bro. All your shits in corporations and LLCs, you make 1% of your money in your actual personal name. You're not going to get taxed. Right. <laughs> Bro, the yeah. middle class just keeps getting demolished, man. And the gap widens and the poor get poorer and the rich get richer. And then they act. It's just so funny when the rich are just like, yeah, man, tax us more. Bro, how, you, t Amazon doesn't even pay taxes, bro. You're getting it from Jose and, you know, Charlie yep. and all these random normal just like average Joes, man. No pun intended, Joe. Yeah, it's. It's the, You're getting it it's from Faye. You're getting it from Faye. <laughs> Faye, you got to get out of Cali, Dude, girl. It's the it's the people that make a hundred to two hundred k a year that get stroked. Get stroked. Yeah, and it's you know that's what everybody strives to make, right? That's the dream: make six figures. Well, guess what, folks? The dream is to not make six figures because if you're going to make six figures, that your dream is basically to get 
to get sodomized by the government. Well, here's the thing. And get here's taxed the thing. Through the wazoo. If the dream is to make seven and figure out how to make five when you make seven. Well, see, that's what's so funny, man. So a guy out there making say three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars in his you know salary who can't write off a fucking thing, right? Because maybe he's like yep. you know he's just a W two employee. Dude, yep. he's he's paying 150 in taxes. He's paying 180. He's paying half his money. A guy yep. making 150 on salary, but can write off everything and his mother, and has corporations outside offshore, and learns how to evade taxes. Uh, dude, it, his his workload is probably like half, and this and that, and it's just it's just the tax. Yeah, I could talk all day on it, bro. But it's just so it's yep. they're the mafia. They're the mafia. So. When people that was like, the only thing that Bernie ever won me over on. When he was like, was that? "No, we need to tax the seven figure." Oh, for four. sure, for sure. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. when he like when he said that, I was like, "Hey, what up, Burn? What up, Burn? Yeah. yeah." But here's the thing. Here's yeah. the thing. Of course. But then he dude, said a bunch never of other shit, and I was like, mm, "No, sir." Big money would never <laughs> let him win. Dude, big right. money would never. They would do anything to keep him out. Anything. Yeah. So it's just crazy, man. So it's just like, again, so of course, Newsom, you know, he's going to say things that benefit the rich. And dude, it's like, it's like, look, Joe, at the end of the day, it's like, dude, of course, like if, if, if the law was like, hey, go to prison or go get a Tesla S model. All right, fine. I'll go get one tomorrow. But who, yeah. not a lot of people can do that. Right. You know what? what am I going to do? What yeah, am I not a lot do? of people get can fucking, just go get, get a, a fucking loan that I can't afford the payment on. Most and then people they're going to have to repossess that. that that's, and then that's, we're back to another financial crisis. That's exactly All right. So right. there you go. Four years after 2035 will be the next financial crisis. I'm going to call it right now. Y'all can call me when I'm 60 years old. And it, you know, it's, yeah, financial crisis is coming. Joe, where, oh, 100%. Joe, where are you? Um, I want to ask, where are you in Texas? Are you in Austin? Are you in Houston? Are you in Dallas? Dallas, Dallas. 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 Okay, because I was looking at, bro, everyone I know from California and LA, because I spent practically 30 years in LA, man. And uh, all my boys are here. Dude, everyone's going to Austin. Everybody. Yep. And that's why I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That's hysterical. <laughs> it's, and that, is, that right there, sir, And that's why, why I'm why not. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's like, I'm staying in Dallas. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm like, fuck the wall. Fuck the wall down on Mexico. We need to build a wall between Dallas and Austin. <laughs> <laughs> like there needs to be a wall between on I-35, man, straight to Austin. We need to build a wall on I-35 that is fucking 200 miles long. Oh my god, dude, that's a line of the day, man. Anything that was dude. said about SPI that was way better. <laughs> or yeah, broke a wall down by Mexico. Yeah, those are not those guys are not our problems. Those <laughs> guys cook great food. They work really hard. The uh, great food you know, cook really hard. I mean, they're <laughs> they're good people. They're, they're good, good people. people. You build a wall between Dallas and Austin, and I will I will donate eighty percent of my fucking paycheck. <laughs> like I will, because if yes. enough people come from California, Joe, you will have to start. Dude, I'm swear to God, I'll move to. I will swear to God, I'll move to Wyoming, bro. So I what, will. So you're, I mean, cause like, I have to ask you, man, cause bro, you're, I'm getting, I'm getting opinions from all my California buddies that are like getting raped and taxed and all this for their whole lives. They're like, yeah, man, Austin's awesome. I'm like, let me talk to a real Texan. How's Austin really? Well, let me just put it to you. You hate California, right? For oh the my people. God. Dude, I can't, can't get out of here the fast people. enough. Okay. Well, let me, let me put it to you. Okay. All right. So it's a, it's Austin, a toilet, dude. It's a toilet. Austin has beautiful hill country, okay? Beautiful hill cut, beautiful scenery all around it. You would never think that a place could be so pretty in Texas. Because in Texas, everybody's like, it's hotter, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot, it's humid, it's hot, it's hot. Austin is very pretty, okay? All right? Uh -huh. Hill country, all that stuff. That's why Californians love it. It's because it's like, it's, it's a tax haven. Got it. It's got very it. attractive in terms of like scenery, nightlife, shit like that. But here's the problem. All they do is bring their bullshit from California <laughs> to Texas. Say, if we All go to Austin, do, are we going to bring our bullshit with us? <laughs> like, bro, it's, 
it is oh god it is just like if you love california for like the scenery um and the and shit like that like and you just you despise the people don't go to austin man because all they're doing is just coming to austin that's it so it's all they're just the building people, a new la yeah it's just a new yeah Cali. that's all they're doing yeah it's a new yeah it's that's it that's it and dude when it gets overpopulated you're really gonna fucking hate it because the roads and highways in austin are already crowded i was gonna like, say are they never, starting to get crowded bro, right the traffic jams in Austin are nasty. Oh, Faye, you're dude, in the Bay nasty. Area? Oh, dude, my condolences. Oh, God. My it condolences, is... Faye. For real. Yeah, Interstate 35. There's the Texas people. They know. Yeah, 35. Interstate 35 going through Austin. Bro, it's here's what happens. Here's what happens. They're like, oh, there's a pothole on the road. All right, shut all eight lanes down. We're going to bring everything to the frontage road. Everything else goes to the frontage road is we that need to right? fix this pothole and and dude they will shut eight lanes of fucking traffic down to two one this way one that way and they're out there trying to fix a little pothole that's it well, that's it there's nothing majorly wrong it's just a tiny little hole joe what's up with houston like, what's up with houston uh that is a humid cesspool basically houston is is like is the is the florida of texas i figured that's what i hear because i've got some buddies yeah. out there and they were like dude be, if you if you do buy like a like a new construction house out here you get on a you know, buildable plan or so you have to visit for a week first dude it let me tell you what's kind of funny in dallas here's the funny part in dallas when you drive through neighborhoods you'll see like really nice homes and like a honda accord out front Okay. Okay. And this is just put just to put this in perspective. Okay. In uh, or in Houston, this doesn't happen in Austin because in Austin they just all own Teslas. Um, in Houston, there will be like a fucking trap house, like they're dealing drugs out the back door, and there's a family on the front half of the house that lives there like it would be like a duplex but out front out front is like a bentley and a rolls royce they all everyone in houston cares about their car more than their house well because, trapping ain't easy dude dude it's all it is in houston bro all it is is just dog shit houses and really nice cars is that because right? Dude, think about it. Think about the hurricane damage that uh, the hurricane risk that you have in Houston. Why would you want to buy a really nice house that you're not really going to get to live in unless the shit gets blown away by a fucking hurricane? Damn. So like, Dallas is where it's at then. D bro, Dallas, I'm telling you, Dallas and North. Like Dallas and North. I will say this though. I will say this. I loved San Antonio. I lived in San Antonio for two years. I loved San Antonio. It's just like, where do you go anymore, man? It's like, if you go on the East Coast, you got hurricanes. If you go on the West Coast, you just have shit. And especially if you're a trader. And then it's like, dude, it's like, I'm, I'm trying to narrow down my focus right now. I'm like, Arizona, Austin. I'm like, where the fuck do I go, man? Seriously, I'm done with Cali, dude. I can't take one more day. Like, I'm literally like, like one more month. Like, that's it. Bro, bro, Colorado. I'm going but to I mean, Mars, that's, that's super. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, Elon can't liberal. start that shit soon enough. I mean, I'm, I, I'm straight I'm to looking Mars. At, yeah, right. I'm looking at uh, Wyoming because, you know, that's a red state if there ever was one. And the scenery is gorgeous. So. Yo, Faye, I'm moving back to China rather than get killed. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Faye going straight back to China, man. Actually, well, dude, I'm, I'm Norwegian. I might as well go straight to Norway. <laughs> I will go with you, sir. Dude. I would make that move. I'm, I'm telling you, man. See, this is the funny part of these guys. We talk so much about trading. Now we kind of do like a podcast thing. I, dude, right, where's bro, the spy? Where's the spy? The one with the I and the Y. Wait, Joe, where's real quick, bro. I'm going straight okay. to Norway, man. <laughs> oh, yes, dude. I'm going I, Spain or I'm going Norway. <laughs> Yo, who yeah. got the connect in Spain or who's got the connect in Norway? Hit me. DM hey, me today. Funny story. 
I actually have the connect in Spain. We have family there. No, you do not. Yes, oh, sir. Oh, come on. Dude, you do realize yes, I'm not sir. kidding, right? Like, I'm literally not kidding. Actually, I looked at, I looked at condos in Spain, man. I looked at countryside in Tuscany. <laughs> Bro, hit my line, son. Hit my <laughs> line after this. We have family there. All right, we're talking on side, it. We're talking one to one later, baby. Is, uh, is from Spain. And so there's still relatives there. Dude, when my son was born, um, our first kid, which was my son, yeah. the family side from Spain sent a gift. And it, w it didn't get here until like two months after he was born, oh, but they shit. bought it like way before. And, and so all of a sudden there's just like this weirdly packaged like parcel on the doorstep of the, uh, of the apartment at the time. And I was like, who the fuck sends us something from Spain? <laughs> And she goes, oh, that's my cousin, so-and-so. And I was like, what? Huh? I've been, Joe, I've, I've no joke, man. I'm not even kidding you. I've, I, dude, I got a dog and laptops, bro. I could go anywhere. I was, I was Googling and really doing my research like in the last like uh, month in all the places in Spain. Marbella is really nice. And I was like, what's the best time zone for me? What's the best place? Like, I'm just like, dude, I got to line this up perfectly, man. Cause I'm making a one-way exit out of Cali. Governor Gruesome, yeah. dude, he shot me right out of here out of a cannon. <laughs> uh, what's the why? What's the oh, you want to see a spy? I'm sorry, bro. You want to see a spy? No, I wanted to see both of them. Spy you know, is not holding here. its balances, bro. It's not holding no, its consolidation. It ain't holding them. Gross, 320 is the line, guys. 320 is the line, man. Then 300, then 280, man. Uh, this is this is gross, yeah. man. If the futures look bad overnight and we get a gap down, we might be in some trouble here in the overall market. Yep. This is pretty freaking ugly. I it just smells opportunity to me, man. You guys have Why, any closing questions? Like, where the hell's Powell at? I thought we were buying at the same like rate. Yeah, <laughs> like, clearly we're not. Clearly we're not, Jerome. <laughs> if you're listening to this. We're clearly not buying at the same rate anymore. Clearly not. To pee or not to pee. <laughs> <laughs> That's too good. Oh, man. That is too I've... good. <laughs> Guys, any closing questions before we wrap this up? Man, my voice is absolutely exhausted after two hours. Let's get some closing questions. Then we, me and Joe got to bounce. Ooh. Of oh, none of you got trapped in SPI today. Oh, SPI. Nasty. Nasty ho. That was just dirty, man. So that was dirty. dirty. Yeah, 312 is that 200 moving average. Absolutely. That's why, you know, if we lose 320, yeah, the 200 moving average is coming. It's coming. Dude, I've been saying it all along. I said, come November. I've been saying it for two months on these webinars. I said, I think November, we see some real market sell-off. Let's see if I'm right. Yep. I think November is yep. it. Yep. Actually, me and Joe have been saying it. Guys, just a quick recap, just in case we what don't have VIX any other at? questions. What's up, Joe? What does the, the VIX do slash VX? Like that? What slash? No, what do you mean? Slash, like forward slash. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, VX. I never look at this stuff. Uh, zoom to a one day chart, like a daily, look at a daily chart. And we really are not up that much in the VIX. I mean, this is like for a big sell off like that, that is not a big move in the VIX. So, I mean, this is controlled selling. Um, and so, yeah, if we lose 320, though, I think we're going to see a big push in the VX. I think I think fear will increase if we lose 320, and you know we'll see we'll see a little bit of a perk. But yeah, no Christmas rally. Well, explain? let's see if Trump gets no elected. Christmas rally. Nah, man. Every single time I'm all I'm Christmas rally every year. I'm always I'm always there for that one. Christmas rally has incredible edge. Um, sympathy plays, uh, Louie, what's up brother? Um, just really quick, man. The only thing you got to know is when you have a massive black swan running, whatever the sector 
that it is. This is EV electric cars. Look at the sympathy plays. Look at stocks that are related names. They will do PRs. They will get action. People will run to them, even if they have no news, just volume. Bring some volume in. Polo was another one. Sun W was another one. When the head of the snake gets cut off and you have a major tank on the main one, which is SPI, these typically tend to follow. It's very rare that a sympathy play becomes the new hot chick, but it does happen and um, kind of ignores the price action of the King Cobra, so to speak. But SPI is the hot chick, the King Cobra. When this got cut, when this got neutered, so did all the simps. Then the sympathies never go as far as the main. They never has much range. 99% um, of the time. That's what you got to know. Guys, just as a quick uh, recap, you know, we have the accelerator course right now. If you have any questions about joining MIC, if you have any questions about just anything, man, just text me at 213-458-5997. We're doing a bundle deal right now with the accelerator and annual, not at the normal price of $1,890, but uh, seriously, but um, we, are, we are giving a, a nice discount. That. What's that? Yesterday. Yes. Did you ever watch Vikings? On you Netflix? know what, man? I, I never did. I, I, my dad loved it though. Dude, you should. I, I'm you gonna should. check it out, man. I I will you, time, like for sure. You will love that shit. It like oh man, it's good. But there there's like what they say all the time is you know when they're in battle or something they always yell out shield wall and that was me yesterday. Like I was looking at everything and I, everything was pulling back and I'm like shield wall shield wall. <laughs> I love it, dude. I love it. Looking at you, Jerome. Where are you? Thanks, Mama Tay. Yeah, yeah. This is it. Yeah, okay. Buying at the same rate, Jerome. Jerome. So, yeah. guys, just in conclusion, man, because I got to make some tea. I got to wake up. I got to have some lunch. Joe's probably going to get out of here. Um, we do these every week, guys. This is so much fun for us. We love you guys, man. We just want to be here and teach you guys as much as we can, man. If we can save one guy from a stupid decision today, man, that, that makes it all worth it. So I hope you guys get value out of this, man. I hope Klaus right and it, this does touch 10. Um, but just, just know, man, this is not the stuff you want to do when you're brand new. And if you do, just please use hard stops. If you have any questions about the accelerator course upgrading, send me a DM, send me a text. Uh, we're going to take care of you, man. Alex is out for the week. His brother, Alan, just got a house in Miami, man. Alex is going to help him move in, dude. He loves his brother very, very dearly. Um, they're going to have a ton of fun. Definitely reach out to Alex on his Instagram to see what he's up to. I know he's in a private jet right now with his bro. Um, but, dude, they're having the time of their life. So you're uh, with me, Joe, and Val this week. If you guys have any questions, just reach out to us. Let Alex breathe a little bit maybe. And, uh, guys, we're going to take care of you, man. So anybody looking in, if you, if, if you have any questions, man, just hit my line. But, we do these every week. Hope to see you next week. And wow, we may get 10. Dude, if, I, if we didn't draw the lines oh, correctly man. today, I don't know what is. Through it. Nasty, bro. Look through at this. It. Cloud's right, dude. Cloud nailed it. Wow, nice. I didn't think, honestly, I didn't think this would touch 10. I thought this would probably close around like maybe 14 at the lowest. Oh. Around this little dude. Little there. That's crazy, right? 11.45. Wow. Or 11, probably 32 around there. Wow. Guys, fun as always. Joe, I'm going to let you go be with your family, brother. Get some brisket on the Barbie. And uh, next week, brother, next week. I can't wait to Later, talk man. about how much we hate California again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always up to talk shit on Austin and California. That's Bro, Faye, Faye and me are agreeing with you. Like We ain't even yeah. fighting it at this point, bro. <laughs> Wherever I go, Faye's going to be right behind schedule. Uh, Faye, I'm going to Spain. You coming with? <laughs> we got to get out of yeah, here. Yeah, right. We All right. All right, guys, catch you later, and uh, we'll catch you next week, man. Thanks for coming. See later, you, man.